Hi, this is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com, and welcome back to another tutorial on JavaFX. In this video, you will learn how to create and use the JavaFX checkbox control. I'm going to cover the following topics. How to create a new checkbox. How to set the text for a checkbox. We will explore the indeterminate property. We'll learn how to set and get the value of checkboxes. And for those of you who stick around till the end, I'm going to cover some bonus content in this video. These are some things that we have not looked at up to now, but are kind of cool and they're really very important to JavaFX GUI. And I'm going to cover them in more detail in a later video, but I'm going to give you a preview if you stick around till the end of this video. Enough talk, let's get to the code. Step one, let's create a new checkbox. Checkbox equals new checkbox. This is the first of two constructors that you can use to create a checkbox. If we use this first version, then in order to set the text on the checkbox, we have to use an additional method call it's checkbox.setText. And now if we run the program, we'll see a checkbox with the text show address to the right of the checkbox. So there we are, the checkbox show address. We can click to check. We can click again to uncheck the checkbox. The second checkbox constructor will allow us to create the checkbox and assign the text to the checkbox at the same time. So I'm going to just comment these two lines of code and then I'm going to show you the second constructor. New checkbox. Show address. And if we run the program, we will see the same result as before, but now in a single line of code instead of two. Now, of course, you should also realize at this point that since we saw the method set text, you can change the text on a text box after it has been created. For some reason you wanted to show alternate text on the checkbox, we would simply use the method set text in the checkbox class. So running the program, you take a look at the checkbox. It appears as though it has two states. It can be checked or unchecked. And by default, when you create a new checkbox, two states are all that you have. But there is also a third state that is possible, and it's called the indeterminate state. And we'll take a look at that right now. There is a property which is false by default. It's the indeterminate property. And we can set that property to true, and I'll show you that, and then we'll take a look at the third possible state for a checkbox. Checkbox dot set allow indeterminate true. Now let's run one more time. And you'll see the unchecked. So if we check it now, we have this little minus sign or hyphen or dash or whatever you want to call it that comes up that shows us that this is an indeterminate state. So nothing has been chosen. We can check, we can uncheck, or we can allow an indeterminate or unknown state. Now this, I guess, can be useful if you want to ensure that a user has made a conscious decision to change the value or to change the state of the checkbox instead of just simply accepting uh, a default of unchecked. Or as they say in the documentation, uh, it is sometimes used to say the value of this checkbox is inherited from a parent if you wanted to do something like that. But we do have that third state, which is the indeterminate state. Uh, it, it's not used a great deal. Most of the checkboxes you will see have 
the two states, the checked and the unchecked, the indeterminate, is available. So you should be aware that it is there. If you find a need for it at some point, you can allow it by setting the indeterminate property. Next on our list is setting the value of the checkbox or setting the state. Now we can set the state to be checked or unchecked. Initially, upon creation, the state of a two-state checkbox is unchecked. Let's look at how to programmatically set the value of the checkbox. And that's quite simple. It's checkbox dot set selected true or false. So true, you will see the checkbox with the check mark and false, you will have a checkbox that does not have a check in the checkbox. So we run again. You'll see now that the checkbox should be checked by default. And if we were to change that to false, we'll see that we are back to the standard unchecked state. Now to get the value or the current state of the checkbox, it's checkbox dot is selected. That returns a Boolean value. So what I'm going to do is right now just print this out to the system console. We'll see the set selected false. So we should see is selected should print false to the system console when we run the program. And it does. And now if we were to change this to true and run the program again, we'll see true in the system console. So that is how you get the value of the current state of the checkbox, whether it is checked or unchecked. And now for those of you who are still here with me, uh, I'm going to get into a little bit of bonus content. What I want to talk about now, and I want to just give you a quick introduction to is properties in JavaFX. Uh, properties in JavaFX are observable and bindable. We haven't discussed properties. Uh, the observable is just the ability to add listeners and to uh, listen for any changes to a property. Bindings allow us to link two objects together such that when the value of one changes, the value of the second one also changes. In the case of a unidirectional binding, that goes only in one direction, as, as makes sense by the word unidirectional. Uh, in the case of a bidirectional binding, those two are linked such that when, for example, property A changes, property B will change. And when property B changes, property A will also change. So they're linked that way. So I want to just add a couple of other controls to our user interface. And then I'm going to just quickly show you how to link those so that in the case of our checkbox, we can provide some behavior. I'm going to take a titled pane that we looked at in our last video, and I'm going to add that to our user interface. And then I'm going to use the checkbox and bindings to show you how to programmatically expand and collapse the titled pane by checking and unchecking the checkbox, and also to programmatically check and uncheck the checkbox by expanding and collapsing the title pane. So just give me a moment and I'll get the user interface set up for that. And then we'll look at how to do bindings on JavaFX properties. Just again, as I said, just an introduction to something that we're going to be exploring in greater depth in a future tutorial. I have a method down here to create a title pane. We'll also add that to our vertical box. And I'll also add another control, a date picker. And add that as well. 
let's run the program and see what that looks like. So again, we don't have any padding or margins on any of these at this point. Just give me a moment and I'll take care of that as well. But we do have the checkbox. We have the address. We have the address titled pane. And we also have a date picker control. And I, I put this in here just so that you can see that once we expand the titled pane, that there actually is room made for the contents of the titled pane and everything else just gets pushed down in the current layout. So I'm going to add some, some padding and some margin for these things just to, to make it look prettier. So we'll get some padding around the vertical box. So we see five here. Maybe I should make that 10. Yeah, that's a little better. And some margin for each of the controls. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so we have some space around and in between. Check and uncheck our checkbox. It has no effect on our titled pane and vice versa. I look at binding the selected property of the checkbox to the expanded property of the titled pane. So what I'm going to do is show you how to use a bidirectional binding to bind the two properties together. The first being the expanded property of the titled pane and the second being the selected property of the checkbox. And the way that that looks is titled pane dot expanded property dot bind bidirectional and I'm going to bind that to the checkbox selected property. So let's run that. Now first before I do that what I want to do is remove the indeterminate property and set the initial state of the checkbox to false. So let's run that. We'll see the unchecked checkbox, the collapsed address box. So now when I check the show address checkbox, magically, with the help, of course, of the bidirectional bindings in JavaFX, the address title pane expands. If I uncheck the show address, the title pane collapses. But here's the other side of it. If I expand the address title pane by clicking on the triangle, the state of the checkbox is also updated correctly. If I now collapse, the state of these two controls is linked by the use of JavaFX property bindings. In this video tutorial, we successfully implemented a JavaFX checkbox. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please click the thumbs up button to like the video and also subscribe to the channel to view more JavaFX videos. Thanks for hanging out with me again today and until next time, stay safe and keep on coding.